Really cool. Let's talk about it. They're um, Art Deco. So I work in radio, so... I didn't know that. And I started collecting these. It's a plastic called Catalin, which you probably think of as Bakelite, which is a sister... You know the Bakelite plastic? <laughs> just a simple walk through Matt Siegel's home, and he just can't help being the Maddie we know and love in the morning on KISS 108. <laughs> These are my actual carved daughters. They, they dress uh, retro old school. I don't know. <laughs> They're not your daughters. And look, I read books, like real books. Is this real? Do you really read them? What do you think? This, I I'm think like, it's for show. The anchor man who bought the fake books? <laughs> And when we sit down, not much changes. It's like we're on Maddie's show in his house. I'm not good at this. I did not solicit this interview. That tell, oh, oh tell you're putting your it back on me? Yeah, you called me. I know, but I... I don't have a PR person. What does that mean? That means I don't really do well in these interviews. Right away after 30 seconds, I said something wrong. You did? That's why we had to start I'm really the sorry. interview over. How's that? Is that good? For the past 37 years, Matt Siegel has ruled the ratings in Boston at one radio station, KISS 108, a station he loves. The music he plays, though, is a much different story. You hate the music that you play. Yeah, but I'm not supposed to like it. Come on. Really? Why? Because you're not Like Cardi young? B at my age? I mean, that's gross. But that, okay, but that's the music that's on your station. Come on, seriously. Matty isn't about the music. He's about the funny and his sidekicks and dear, dear friends, Billy Costa and Lisa Donovan. We interrupt this story with a message for Billy. Why don't you eat something? <laughs> Have a piece of cake, Bill, for God's sake. Matty can't help himself and the listeners eat it up. What's the magic? It doesn't feel magical to me. You'd have to ask them. But it feels them. magical to the people but who you listen have to, to you. But you have to you ask have them. You have a rabid audience. I they do. love you. They love Billy. They love Lisa. They love, they need that when they drive in. They need it. Right. But don't ask me why. I think. No, I have to ask you why. That's the whole point of this interview. Part of me thinks there's something wrong with them. but <laughs> You cannot say that about your audience. And for now, the jokes go away and some insight into Maddie and what he does so well on the show. It was back in 1991, and Maddie got a call at Kiss that his dad had just died. So he said to his co-worker... I said, I have to leave. My dad just died. It was like 6.30 in the morning. And he said, what should I say on the air if you leave? And I said, say my dad died. And I, that's probably the beginning of it's all real, that you would want to... <laughs> Really? <laughs> this is the heaviest part of the interview, <laughs> and you're jumping on me. Being real is the magic, and drawing on moments from his childhood. What were you like as a little kid? Terrified. Terrified of All what? All the time, everyone, everything. Is that real? Not anymore. No, but I was that up. real back I, then? I filled is out. Is this a joke? No. You asked me to pick a word, I picked one. What were you terrified of? The dark the other children. I was sort of a scared kid and got to be the funny kid to come over the scared. You know, it's kind of classic. What did your parents teach you? Oh, you hate that question. Oh, God. Oh, you I hated hate that question. I hate it, yeah. I don't know. What did they teach you? Well, they were fussy. They were f fussy with grammar. So, you know, I, and I hated it. You know, like I would say, so this guy, you know, he was he came, he hit me in school today. And my parents, instead of being sympathetic about what happened <laughs> to me, they would say, no, Matthew, it's a guy. It's not this guy. It's a guy. And I would, I hated it. But now that I'm a broadcaster, I, I can speak. If I asked your kids what they learned from you, what would they say? Well, they're funny. They got that. They are funny. And because right on cue, the phone rings. I I see, I had my phone turned off, and then you told me to turn it on. Oh, there's the, what's that? One of my daughters. Is that your oldest? The actress, yeah. Oh, I love her. Hi, Ale hi. Alexandra, I'm on television. Oh. You're on, right hi. now, Alexandra, it's Maria from Channel 5. Hi, Maria. Hi, hi. great to, great. So, your father was raving about you. And um, listen, this is perfect timing, because I just asked him what his kids would say about him. What's the one thing that he gave you that you can take with you all your life? My dad gave me my humor. Hey! No. That's hey. exactly what he said. Yeah. And a lot of cash. Morning Drive Radio has been good to Maddie, and he knows it. He actually credits Oprah for helping shape how he talks to people on the radio. In my whole career, 
I think that was the only interview that I was nervous. And she could tell. I was really nervous, yeah. So Oprah said she liked his watch, that put Maddie at ease, and he realizes that like exactly simply what is what makes good radio. And so does appreciating what you have and how you got there. But in the book of your life, what would you say? Thanks for putting up with me. <laughs> That's the best you've got, Maddie. That's pretty much, yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry I left the toilet seat up. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what you're going to put there. Please, please don't hate me. And to the listeners? Oh, thanks. Yeah, I never saw that. Not in a million years. Maddie has two National Marconi Awards, radio's highest honor. He's also in the Massachusetts Broadcasters Hall of Fame, and he's just wrapped two sold-out stand-up shows at the Wilbur Theater and has another one in October.